Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, Learn Academic English. Today I'm continuing my series of Grammar Shorts videos with a quick lesson on how to use the words despite, in spite of, and despite the fact that. These words are common, especially in writing. So let's start with the meaning. What do these words mean? Well, first of all, despite and in spite of have exactly the same meaning. So if you're wondering what the difference is between despite and in spite of, there is no difference. I prefer to use the word despite because in writing, one of my goals is to be concise to use a smaller number of words to express my idea clearly. And for that reason, I choose despite. It's shorter than in spite of, but you can use either one. What do these words mean? They show unexpected contrast. So they have a similar meaning to although, even though, and yet. Of course, the grammar is very different. These words are conjunctions, so they are used with clauses, but despite and in spite of are prepositions. Because they are prepositions, they are always going to be followed by a noun or a noun phrase. So let's see some examples. First, um, the topic of today's sentences is solar power. I always like to have a theme with my examples to give a little bit of context. Solar power, as you probably know, is power that is generated from the sun. And this is a hot topic where I live in California because the state of California has a lot of policies to try to have a cleaner environment and to fight climate change. So we have a lot of, oh, and we have a lot of sun here. So we have a lot of discussions about solar power in my state. So let's see the first example. Despite the benefits of solar power, people have been slow to adopt this technology. So what do we have here? We have the word despite, and then we have a noun phrase. We have the noun benefits, and it's a noun phrase because it's a group of words. We have a prepositional phrase here that is coming after benefits, but despite, and then the rest of it is the noun phrase. We're always gonna put a comma here because this introduces the sentence or it's at the beginning of the sentence. And then the main part of the sentence is gonna be this clause with the subject people and verb have been. Let's look at the next one. People have been slow to adopt solar panels despite the benefits. So here we have basically the same sentence, but what I did is I moved this to the end of the sentence. I wanted you to see that you can put it at the beginning or at the end. Notice that when we put it at the end, there is no comma. Okay, next, let's look at in spite of. In spite of the rebates offered by the state, solar panels are often considered expensive. So first of all, do you know the word rebates? Rebates is money that the government will give you to encourage you to do something. So for example, in California, the state is trying to make the environment better. So the state has a lot of rebates that they offer people to do different changes to their homes to make their home more energy efficient. So again, this is money that the state will give you to do something that the state wants you to do. Okay, so let's look at the sentence. In spite of the rebates offered by the state, solar panels are often considered expensive. Here we have in spite of, and then we have this long thing here. This is a noun phrase. So we have the noun rebates. And then what do we have here? Here we have a reduced adjective clause that is describing rebates. What kind of rebates? Rebates that are offered by the state. Okay, so we have this long noun phrase after in spite of, we're gonna use a comma here, and then this is the main part of our sentence. 
and notice that you can put in spite of or despite at the beginning of the sentence or at the end. Let's see how we can put it in the middle. California requires new homes to have solar panels and despite the cost, homeowners appreciate this policy. So what do we have here? We have a compound sentence with two clauses. We have subject California, verb requires, and then in the second part of the sentence, we have homeowners as the subject and the verb appreciate. And these clauses are combined with the conjunction and. And we have, despite the cost, introducing the second clause. So let's read it one more time. California requires new homes to have solar panels and, despite the cost, homeowners appreciate this policy. So even though they are expensive, homeowners appreciate them. Okay, next I'm going to show you two other ways that you can use these words, including how to use despite the fact that. Now let's look at a couple other ways that you can use despite or in spite of. So sometimes the idea that you want to talk about needs to include a subject and a verb. Without that subject and verb, it's just not as clear. So how can you use despite or in spite of with a clause, with a longer group of words that has a subject and verb? You can do it if you use despite the fact that. So let's see this one. Despite the fact that solar panels save people money in the long run, most people are not willing to buy them. So what do we see here? We have the word despite the fact that, and then we have a clause here. We have solar panels as the subject and verb is save. Then we have our comma at the end of that first part. And then we have the main part of the sentence with the main subject and main verb. So this is very common. And instead of doing that, you could say although or even though, like although solar panels save people money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, another thing that you can do is that you can take out this subject and then you can change this verb to a noun. And you know that to do that, you need to make a gerund. So we can change this verb to the noun saving with ing, but we have to be careful when we do that. And let me show you how that works. So for example, in this sentence, despite saving people money in the long run, most people are not willing to buy solar panels. So this sentence is not correct. The reason is that what is the subject of this? What is saving? Solar panels. But what is the subject of the next part of the sentence? People. So those two don't match. And for that reason, we cannot do it for this one. So let's look at a sentence that's correct. Despite saving people money in the long run, solar panels are still not very popular. So in this case, what is saving people money? Solar panels. And solar panels is the subject of the next part. So in that case, the subjects match and this sentence is correct. So I'm bringing this up because it's pretty common that you want to use despite, but you don't have a noun. And you need to take a verb and make it into a noun in order to use despite or in spite of. Don't forget that you can also use a subject and a verb like we did here. Or if you do that, you can also use although or even though because they have the same meaning. So as always, I will leave a question down in the description box below and you can practice this grammar with me. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see you back here next time. Take care.